Welcome back to the pop. Hi guys. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back with another episode. I believe this is episode three of season eight. So you know if you haven't had a chance yet to um, check out the other episodes, that's what you need to be doing. Otherwise, especially if you're on YouTube, make sure that you are liking, sharing, letting me know if there's other topics that you'd like for me to cover, because here we are talking about all things along the way of us pursuing peace. Welcome back. I'm Dr. Shanae of SP Consulting Group. I am your host and producer of this podcast. What do you know? And my background, if for those of you that don't know, maybe this is your first episode, I am a organizational development psychologist, like sin psychotherapist, as well as a chemical dependency counselor. I'm a certified mentor and coach, certified transformational coach. I also recently obtained my uh, master's level uh, practitioner certification in neuro-linguistic programming. What is that? for another episode. (laughs) Today we are talking about Juneteenth. And I titled it, What in the Juneteenth is Going On? And I titled it that because there is so much to glean from this celebration. And so I want to start off with some facts, okay? Let's, Let's deal with the facts. First of all, actually, before I even go there, how y'all doing? How are you all doing? I wanted to specifically ask that question today because when it's all said and done, there's a lot that we can learn if we make a point to learn it, if you get what I'm saying. You know, I try to be on here and just go with the flow a lot of times, but I really, I have really been noticing a lot about people in my over 17 years of studies on human behavior and behavioral change and healing and growth and, you know, thriving past trauma and all those things, you know, from a personal and professional standpoint, actually. So follow me a little bit. And I'm, I'm, for those that may be watching me, I'm like shrugging my shoulders. I'm checking in with myself and I'm realizing that there's a little bit of stress in my shoulders. Um, as I've been sitting here at this point for a couple of hours at my desk, working with my clients and I need to get up and take a break. So I will do so after this episode. And I hope that if you are checking in with yourself and you realize that your stress is showing up in your body in one way or another, that you do something about it. Now, again, for my new listeners, I usually focus a lot of my work, not just on work-life balance and how to attain that, but also for my leaders, for my people leaders, community leaders, uh, business executives, business owners, um, celebrity influencers, you know, all those that are leading, whether it's by example, by uh, position, uh, earned role, or by design, by purpose, you know? So when I am giving tidbits, know that it applies both at home and in the workplace. And that is sort of my upfront ask for you guys to see what's going on from all fronts, okay? Don't just stick yourself in one space and say, oh yeah, that'll work because my issue's going on at work. This'll be great for that, you know? Okay, make sure it's great for you at home too, okay? All right. We're going to have some guests coming on here. Also, I I guess I'm doing a bit of house cleaning. (laughs) House cleaning is a house cleaning, um, whatever it's called. But either way, I am letting you guys know the heads up before I delve into this topic. But let's start off with what is Juneteenth. And I'm going to go just based off of things that you guys can find online if you're purposely going there. But, you know, Juneteenth, even though it, um, became a federal holiday June 17th of last year, 2021, um, as signed by our president, Joe Biden. Juneteenth is known as like Independence Day or like 
Jubilee Day, Emancipation Day, Freedom Day, Black Independence Day. Um, and it is a, a time in history going back to, um, you know, 1865 in Galveston, Texas, where um, basically there were some people that were still being enslaved and weren't given the memo. They were not given the memo. They weren't on the phone line to know that slaves were freed in so many other places except there. And I want to say except there, and I'll put up my little air quotes for those that are watching, um, <laughs> because there's some more to it that we're going to glean from it, which is why, again, this particular episode is titled, What in the Juneteenth is Going On? Now, I'm recording this right before Juneteenth. But I believe that this episode is going to be um, live after Juneteenth has passed. Yeah, on the 24th. I was looking at the calendar uh, for a second. But as we look at this, it's commemorating a time when there was a message received that there was freedom there that had actually been put in place a couple years prior, right? Um, so just let me just give you the background scoop real quick, and then we're going to go into some of the lessons learned and the steps you can take to learn from this, okay? So President at the time, Abraham Lincoln, he had signed and issued the Emancipation Proclamation. January 1st, 1863, pay attention to the date, January 1st, 1863, where it had freed the enslaved people in Texas and all of the other Southern uh, states of the Confederacy, except for parts of states not in rebellion. So basically the other states that didn't rebel against, um, you know, this was, let me see, let me just go back a little bit. Okay, so 1865. Okay, I'm trying to follow my timeline in my notes because I was just scribbling, okay? So bear with me. Um, so, okay, there was an announcement, like a general order. It was general order number three by the Union Army General Gordon Granger proclaiming freedom for enslaved people in Texas, which was the last state of the Confederacy with institutional slavery. So prior to that uh, announcement in 65, 1865, June 19th, 1865, Abraham Lincoln had already issued an order. Okay. So this is where the two years come from. Okay. I was sort of reading my notes backwards, but this is where that came from. Okay. And so enforcement of the proclamation generally relied on the advances of the union troops at the times. So Texas, you know, at the time it was the most remote state of the former Confederacy has seen an expansion of slavery and had a low presence of union troops as the American civil war ended. So the enforcement there had been slow. People were slow to get the memo, okay? And it was because of what was going on as far as like, I would even say because of how large Texas is, just the modes of the communication wasn't there. However, regardless of that, two years earlier, these enslaved Africans, African-Americans had already happened. Let's fast forward a little bit because I'm, I'm giving a little bit of a history and I'm, I'm doing it in a way to also highlight some things. And I want you guys to say with me. So, yes, this is a joyous day. Federal authorities announced the abolition of slavery and then these additional slaves that were there still enslaved. They were free. This is why we celebrate. This is this is why. OK, this is why. And so, again, this is. This is 
the pursuit of peace. This is the podcast where we talk about all things on the road to finding peace on purpose. How can we be more self-aware? How can we take the information that we know to be going on in our environments and in our homes, in our in our minds, to help us seek a place of peace and to release stress, to release these strongholds, release these perceived enslavements that are in our mind preventing us from moving forward. But let me tell you, there were two states, did y'all know this? There were two states, Delaware and Kentucky, that still allowed slavery until the ratification of the 13th Amendment. That's six months after Juneteenth. So there was, as I was looking through Instagram, you know, I do that from time to time. I'm trying to get, I'm trying to get it up in there. So, you know, follow me, you know, check out the stuff I'll be finding and repurposing for you guys and or, um, you know, studying and putting out there for you tips and tools, things that can help you quick, things that you can do to release some stress. Um, think about this. There were two years, a two year time span from which there was an order, there was a precedence for slavery ending. Two years later, talk about communication loops, talk about believing you aren't able when you are able to move forward, whether that's in your business, whether that's move away from a job that is toxic, that is no longer serving your needs for growth. You know, challenges also help with growth. So I want to specify that, that is no longer where you need to be and how you can move forward, even if otherwise you get the memo later. Step it out on faith. I talk about that too, right? Step out on faith. Keep your eyes wide open. Pay attention. But even with that two years, oh my goodness, even with that two years of a delayed response, delayed communication, delayed news, because of fear, I can only imagine the fear of moving like a free man at that time, moving like a free woman, moving as if, you know, navigating the world, like you're free, like you can be in places that you were otherwise told you couldn't be like the fear. Because even two, like, what is that? Um, six months after Juneteenth. Okay. Delaware and Kentucky still allowed slavery and it is a pivotal moment in history. It's also a pivotal learning opportunity. The Emancipation Proclamation did not end slavery. It did not. It did not. But I wonder, what did slaves do after, after they were free? According to research and, you know, governmental documentation, they fled. Once they found out they were free, they quickly left. The neighborhood, the owner, while others demanded some money. I'm going to stay right here, but you're going to pay me. Most importantly, African-Americans could make choices for themselves about where they labored and the type of work that they performed, according to the research. But I will tell you that I'm still working with people to come out of that enslaved mentality. We can call it different things for the time being, I'd call it imposter syndrome, where we don't believe we can. When the world is open to possibilities, yes, there are still gaps. Yes, there are still people getting in the way of the movement. But what do you need for your peace? Man, think about that. Like you have the ability to run quickly away from your fears, 
Run quickly away from people that are getting in your way. Run quickly and demand more. Just a thought. Just a thought. Because when we are on this pursuit of peace, we find ourselves making the mistake. The mistake, meaning you don't intend to be doing this. You don't intend to be doing this because no one makes a mistake on purpose. No one, right? No one. But the mistakes still happen because you believe there is a benefit to it. But let me tell you, there is no benefit to remaining stagnant. There is no benefit to procrastinating. There is no benefit to holding on to fear and allowing it to feed and guide your every move. Survival mode is one of them. You being in this space of survival from something that you no longer need to survive. I am pretty sure if I was alive during that time, the fear could have been crippling. Like, I can't even imagine. I can't even imagine the fear of moving out of what were things that protected you, that kept you alive, listening, following orders, you know, or what were the consequences, right? And so then that's where you get to the place of your brain, regardless of the scenario, regardless of the time, our brains are still evolving, but they still are showing today similar ways of survival, which is, no, we're not enslaved by other people, but what if we are still enslaved to ourselves, to our mind, to our negativity, to our refusal to, to see, entertain the possibilities, to have hope, to have faith, all these things that we talk about when we're talking about pursuing peace and doing it like, like they said, the government said, you know, some of these folks was up out of there, like, I'm not doing this, peace out, like, I'm, I'm out, I'm out. They fled. How can you get yourself into a position to not allow the regular mindset that has become your baseline, your new baseline? How can we put a little wedge in there and like maybe stop ourselves just a little bit and say, let me pivot. Let me do something that isn't comfortable because the perceived threat is not there. That's why a lot of times you get this information from doing a self-check. I am anxious. What is the anxiety about? What is the fear about? What is the depression about? What is the sadness about? What is the overwhelm about? Take it apart piece by piece. So these are some of the questions that you can ask yourself. Whatever emotion that you are experiencing that is not necessarily about anything. <laughs> Sometimes it's not about anything. It's just what we have slid into unknowingly as a new baseline of thinking, our, our new mindset, our new cognitive distortion, our new way of thinking that does not serve us and that is toxic and is debilitating to our growth, to our ability to seek and have and just wallow in harmony and peace in the midst of whatever is going on around you. Like, how, how can we do that? Like, how, how? What can you learn from Juneteenth? Ask yourself, what can I learn? What am I feeling right now? What is going on with my mental, emotional, spiritual, physical health, right? And what am I going to do about it? Not what do I intend? What do, you know, the intentions are going to be there and it's going to put you in a place of feeling guilty and then beating up on yourself. And again, that just reinforces the same thing, the same thing. How can you get to the next step? How can you move forward? And just so you know, by taking that time to release and put in front of you and face, what are these things that are keeping me enslaved after 
A trigger has dissipated after the threat is gone, after you've let an employer that made you feel as if you weren't enough. Maybe historical evidence has shown that you weren't enough. Messaging from the past, messaging that has been in your lineage, that has made an imprint on your DNA to second guess your worth. That's a whole nother podcast. <laughs> Let me know if we want to delve into that. But either way, when it's all said and done, which is, has become my phrase lately, when it is all said and done, what you going to do? Are you going to get up out of there? Get up out of your mess? Demand more? Demand to be paid more? Demand to make more and generate more? Have a greater impact on those who are watching you, whether it's through social media, whether it's through a following that you have of any regard and on any type of platform. What are you going to learn from Juneteenth as we celebrate? Because to change and to evolve and to move on and to get greater and to be greater, that is a celebration, even if it comes with some of the rough stuff. I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure that there was this bittersweet sort of, I don't know, sort of just bittersweetness, if I can make that up and put it out there. There was this bittersweet component to Juneteenth. Yes, we are free. We are no longer enslaved. But for two years, and using only this context, because we can really go deep into how we shouldn't have even been slaved in the first place. Uh-huh. Yep. I said it. And when it's all said and done, like I said, the phrase keep coming up. <laughs> but when it is all said and done, what are you going to do to balance it out? Accept the fact that the change that you need requires you to step out of that enslaved mentality and wake up to the truth. You are the only one getting in your way. Stress can actually be what's enslaving you. Overwhelm can be enslaving you. Being in this cycle of belief still that being busy means that you're worth something. No, find your worth within yourself. What, a, what happened to self-love? What happened to know your worth? What happened to the efforts that are required for you to do what you need to do? Mind, body, spirit. Okay. Don't forget spirit because when you can't figure it out and move past some of these strongholds and these huge barriers in your mind, mentally and physically, things are going on and everything's a mess. Spiritually, faith, hope, all the things that you don't see can actually help pull you through to the other side to find that I in your storm. That moment, that moment, that sweet moment. You know, like I said, they they said this, they called this that jubilee. This is this is more than joy. This is more than what you can ever expect. But it is up to you. Because again, some people stayed. Some people stayed. And I believe, I truly believe that there were other things that happened that weren't accounted for. It wasn't just, oh, we left or we demanded pay and got paid. I believe that some stayed, did not get paid because sometimes that's how our brain does us. It learns a pattern, even if it's in protection mode, especially when it's for a place of protection where our minds goes on re repeat, replay, you know, Groundhog's Day movie type of situation where until we get the message, 
we are in this state of being stagnant, in this state of ignorance that is not bliss. Ignorance that's self-imposed, enslaved, blocked, paralyzed. All those words that mean you do nothing. And that's the mistake that you don't want to make. Because there's a lot of implications that come with when you aren't able to see the truth, heal, grow, evolve, because you're stuck in survival mode. You're stuck in this place where fear has you so gripped. You're so gripped that even when you try, for example, I had posted this in my uh, on my Facebook page, my personal Facebook page. And uh, I was like, you know, you can get into this place. And I was responding to somebody. The message was just about, what if I told you that you have been stressed out so long that it becomes your new baseline of, you know, survival mode. And somebody mentioned like, yeah, yeah. And uh, the response was, yeah, that's, this is how it shows up. This is an example of how it shows up. The example is when you get ready to rest and take a break, your mind starts telling you all the issues with that. All the problems that's going to come from you taking that break, Right. Like if that's you, like you really are sitting here like, whoa, yes. All the issues with you taking a break, more stress, more to work on. Even if I leave and I'm coming back, there's going to be an issue. That's fear when you are not able to predict the future. You're not, you're not. But guess what? I can tell you from my 17 plus years in this industry, there are so many people that have spent so much time. And when I tell you time, years in survival mode, that once they actually woke up, talk about Juneteenth, when they finally woke up to the realization that they were free and that all they had to do was move forward to leave, tears. Because now we have to do psychotherapy. We're not talking anymore about wellness coaching. So what are you going to do? What in the Juneteenth is going to be going on with you as you celebrate freedom? What does freedom mean for you today? What can it mean? Free from bondage of your own mind and inner critic. All of those things that are getting in your way. It may be different for you, but for those where this speaks to you, I hope this helped. I hope that you see this as not only a release, maybe you also release in that form of tears and the outpour, but get happy. Get excited. Celebrate what it is that we are celebrating as African Americans in this space of freedom, the jubilance, you know, everything that we prayed for for so long. What are you praying for? What have you set out intentions for? What are you doing affirmations for? What are you what are you trying? <laughs> what are you trying to achieve? Just know that you have to move. It can't be what you think. It can't be what you feel. It can't even be sometimes what your mind will get you to believe is a fact. If it's not based off of what's happening right in front of you, if there's no reason why you shouldn't be moving forward, that is based in fact. I advise you to run quickly so that you can set your mind up for success of implementing a new mindset. It takes practice and it takes consistency. So again, I hope that you guys are hearing the steps that you need to take to begin to take this golden moment in history 
that is celebrated and honored every year now on a federal level, Juneteenth, National Independence Day for the African-American community. And ask yourself, what do I need? Do a brain dump. Take some time to actually sit with what you're feeling so that you can understand where you are. The next step is then to separate them. Separate them from the things that you can influence, from the things that are just of concern that maybe you need to process and come to inner personal resolution on, right? And then take the next step, take the next step to ensure that you act on the things that you can do something about. Get in the habit of movement. Get in the habit of releasing stress, releasing false narratives in your mind, releasing it. Get in that habit. And the only way that you can get in the habit is by doing it every day. Check in with yourself every day. Okay. So I hope that you all were able to catch them. You can always replay and write down these steps that I'm, I'm giving you. If you'd like help with those steps, of course, you can reach out to me at officialspcg.com. You can go to my website and um, click on that link at the top right corner that lets you know that you can schedule a consultation, book a consultation. You can also just, you know, direct message me. OK, it's not that difficult in the sense of steps you have to take. You can either message me on whatever platform that you are listening to me on. On my YouTube, definitely be on the lookout for more. We are going to have a lineup, I believe this afternoon, I have a, a meeting with someone that wants to get on here. We're gonna be bringing on some more guests to speak to you about their ways, their stories, their testimonies of how they have gone beyond the stress on their pursuit of peace, both at home and in the workplace, and how it had made them a better leader in all respects. So you guys take care. I will see you guys in a couple of weeks. Like I said, we drop new episodes on the second and fourth Friday of each month. All right. You guys take care. Love y'all. See you later. Bye.